All right, everybody, we're heading to meet the family that lives also under the I-10 bridge here in Pensacola, Florida. There's Justin right there, I believe. Yep, that's him. All right. We're gonna go up here and meet Justin and his sweet family, Miss Stephanie and Mr. Freddie. All right, Justin, you are the son of Miss Stephanie, yes, and your stepdad is Freddie. Yes. How old are you? Uh, 26. 26. I appreciate your dad sharing his testimony of you guys and your struggle out here. So, for the most part, are you content, kind of just day to day, or how how is your normal schedule out here? Day by day. You know? Day by day. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys pretty much feel safe at this point? Oh, yeah, most definitely. That's good. There's so many people, so it's, it's, right. it's cool out here. You know? All right, well, thank you so much, Justin. Yes, You don't? <laughs> okay. All right, everybody. So this is Mr. Freddy. How are you, Freddy? I'm fine. How are you? I'm doing well. First of all, on behalf of my organization, Certified, we want to let you know that we appreciate your time. You're acknowledged. You're still worthy. And uh, this is all glory to God. And we just want to thank you in advance for your testimony today. Okay? Okay. All right, Freddy. So to let the viewers know a little bit about yourself, how long have you been out here? Yeah, been eight years. Eight years. I mean, not under the bridge, but different places. Okay. In Pensacola? Yeah. Are you born and raised in Pensacola? Yes, I am. What are some of your experiences out here? I came up when I was out downtown one night. Uh-huh. You know, I ran across my old lady. She went my old lady then, you know, but she was she coming outside with a wheelchair bleeding and somebody had punched in the eye and knocked in the street and left her out there and took her money. Wow. I took her and helped her, you know, took her to the subway, cleaned her up. You know, and ever since then, you know, I kept it with me and kept it safe. You okay. know, because it's not, it's not easy being ahead by yourself. When, people, when you don't have no legs, and people take advantage of you, you know. Yeah. So that when I met her eight years ago. So you guys have both kind of traveled together out here. Yeah. Okay. Have y'all ever experienced anything like threatening wise, or anyone trying to steal or do something crazy out here under the bridge? Yeah, we had somebody the other day coming out here. We was up on the bridge and they was looking in our window. They were looking in your tent? Yeah, looking in my tent. And I, you know, get away from my tent. So, yeah, like, he couldn't hear me. Was it a, a, another homeless gentleman yeah. or what? So when I did come down, I went down and I told him, mm -hmm. if I catch y'all, in my tent, in my tent, I would do something to you. Okay, I heard that. That's your first and last warning. So that's about the most heat so far or? Yeah, down here. Yeah. <laughs> I see you guys, usually you guys are out here on this Vidoc. Um, and that's where you guys work every day to kind of make your living. Yeah. No, um, everybody, don't people call it Vidoc no more. Oh. They were really called when I was little. <laughs> oh, okay. Vidoc. <laughs> yeah. What's it called now? Just the bridge? Just the bridge, man. Okay. Well, I guess I'm old school today. Yeah, you are. <laughs> um, so, Freddie, you were telling me earlier that you grew up out here. Before this whole bridge was even here, you lived like right across the street, right? Across from this green covering on the fence. Yeah, that was your neighborhood. Yes. You feel comfortable, huh? Yeah. Well, you know, I feel coming where I go. I'm not scared of nobody. <laughs> All right, Freddie. And are you a veteran, didn't yes. you say? What service? Army. Army? Okay. Well, thank you for serving also. Do you mind if we just go ahead and get a tour of kind of where you stay and... I see your queen in there. I won't try to put her all on film. <laughs> Unless she wants to be. Alright y'all, so this is their nice home. This is the front porch. And that's his queen back there. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Alright, we appreciate your time. How did you get to this position where you're out here now? Well, when I got hurt, I had a hernia operation. Okay. And, uh, I couldn't work, so I ended up losing everything. I ended up out here do a tip service, so they didn't want to pay. So I ended up out here, you know. I just decided, you know, it was hard down. You know, when your family is the worst enemy you can have. My family, my sisters and brothers, so I ain't gonna say my whole family, sisters and brothers. Uh -huh. You know, was. Well, I went to prison one time when I came home. Okay. Everything belonged to me that my mom left up when my, my mom passed. 
they sold it. Wow. You know, so I didn't get none of the money out of the deal, none of the house. So I didn't know what that was. I'm sorry, go ahead. The truck went by. Yeah. Well, I didn't know what nothing at all. My, my sister brother remember me because when I was coming up, I had everything. Her mom them gave me everything. They had to work for what they did. Yeah. You know, I was the only kid in the seventh grade with a brand new car driving school. Seventh grade? Yep. You were balling as a kid. <laughs> Were you yeah, the baby boy? I'm the baby boy. Oh. So baby, I tell you, I was the only kid that I had. Had a brand new car, motorcycle, horses. Wow. I did weird through, I had everything. Yeah. You know, the thing that the whole, you know, I had, I had family that break apart. Yeah. You know, I, my grandma lived in weird through. Okay. Aunties, stuff like that. Y'all grew up in a house out there? Well, and I then, didn't, I didn't ride on the weekends, me and time. I just, you know, with my grandma and stuff, you know. And um, my cousin, you know, we hang out. Okay. We could ride my horses and stuff on the weekends. Sure. Yeah, sound like y'all had it made out there. <laughs> Came out here on the weekdays. Uh huh. Like I had to go to school and stuff, you know. I had an interesting life, you know. Yeah. Do you plan to be here longer? You know, God's clearly providing always. You're you know, a believer. You know one thing? I'm a believer. I'm a born again Christian. Okay. You know, God keep me healthy. Right. He keep me keep strength in my body, me push her around. Yeah. So. Ain't nothing like an ask from God. Yeah. You know, he wakes me up every morning. I heard that. And people ask, how you doing? I'm doing fine. I woke up. <laughs> That's right. That is I, so I, right. Some folks didn't wake up this morning. That's right. Uh, the most beautiful thing, when I've met homeless individuals out here, you're not homeless when you're content with where God's got you. To me, your home is with him. Where This is in our home anyways. You know what I mean? So, like you said, he provides for you, and I think I met some of the nicest people out here, you know, and I've, I've experienced eviction in my own life and walking at a point, and me and my mother. So, I understand the struggle. I haven't had to sleep in a tent, but I, I didn't have an option of where I was going, but we always had God, and we knew that. So, See, he, he carried us day to day. Right. But you know one thing? People that have material things mm -hmm. in life, you're not better than nobody. Yeah. You still, these still people. Yeah. You don't know why they living mm -hmm. or where they living. It's still people because you live with a house with a roof on it. That make you better than that man over there? No. That's right. I never thought I was better than nobody. Before I became homeless. Uh, yeah. Growing up, I never thought I was better than these people. You know, I used to have a kid go to my mama's house. And they, they, during my dinner time, he said, God. Your mama cooking seven for dinner during the weekday? I said, every day. Wow. We only get that once a week. That's but what's up. My mama cooked a big meal every day. Yeah. I mean, because we had it was six of us, you know? Okay. You had sisters? I had two sisters, four brothers. Yeah, y'all were eating in that house. Everybody gone with just me and my brother left. You and your brother left? Yeah, one brother. He year older than me. Okay. Me and him only two left me. Just me and him left in this world. Right. Freddie, just to close it out for the viewers, what is a word of advice that you'll give anyone out here struggling with homelessness, like they don't have a tent or this is their first day out? What would you say would would be something that you could offer them as a believer in God to keep them through this journey? It depends what these people's about in life, you know. I've never been a nasty person to know what. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of people about that bridge that helped me and her because they always see us, they always see us smile on our face. Yeah. I mean, they don't see us with no alcohol in our hand or nothing, you know. And that's what people look at. Okay, why would I help him? How he do his fancy little. You know, if you want, if you want certain people, show them where you're putting their money to. Or show them how to, you know, what you, what you need to be helped with. Okay. If we ask somebody, you need help with this, him? You know, people look at you and say, okay, we'll go get that for you. And they see whatever they get us, we use. Yeah. As people go get it, they go sell it. You know, you don't do that. Right. You know, I advise anybody to come out here, do the right thing. I know days I wouldn't, I wouldn't thought about it. in my life still I have a sign. My pride was too big. Your pride was too big? Yeah. Okay. But, but you know, everything happened in the life that you have to ask somebody something. Yeah. Like I told, I told a guy one day, one night, I said, you know one thing, I hate asking you to help me out. He said, why? I said, because of my pride. Because I've never been a man to ask nobody nothing. I said, but sometime in life, you're going to have to. Yeah. I said, y'all can laugh at me or laugh at her or laugh at anybody. 
but you can be in the mall the same spot. That's right. It's up to God to take care of your thing. I, I, I appreciate the fact and I respect that you value that. Like a lot of people don't value that no more. So, and like you said, that genuine outlook, people see that when they look at you guys. So yeah, the goodness of you is still intact. So that's a beautiful soul to have in this position out here yep. and the strength of every reason why you guys are, are making it, you know? You got a grounded mind. A lot, so. of, a lot of officers. Yeah. Police officers? Yeah, they have us. You know, we're not, we're not part of the crowd that's running around him, bugging, fighting, you know, doing all kinds of stuff. You know? Right. We got, that, we got that crowd. They see that and they say, you know, I don't mess with nobody. Every time we see y'all, y'all by yourself. I'm not happy, y'all. Yeah. Freddie, I appreciate your time. Thank you for your word of advice for everyone. And uh, God bless you. God bless you. Alrighty.